Hi all! So last week, I kicked off our second Q&A session, promising that the best questions will get featured or animated. Well, now I am here to deliver. Somebody asked me whether I had any hilarious moment playing D&D, and boy do I have a great story to tell you. But before I get to that, let me answer a few other questions first. Scrap Jesus is going to DM for a group of players that are new to D&D and is asking me for some tips. Well, Scrap, I think the first things the players need to know is the role of the DM and players. A lot of new players make the mistake of thinking that they can make up the story along with the DM. When you're describing the dungeon, they might chime in and say, and the dragon jumps out. No, 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 no. They don't dictate the course of the story. They only have control over their character and their background and they can only affect the narrative world through the actions of their characters. Also, try to give everyone the time to shine. Being inexperienced, they might not be able to act as spontaneously as the players you see in web series like Critical Role or Penny Arcade's Acquisitions Incorporated. So a trick I often use is seeding a certain event so that they kinda know what is coming. For example, their character would receive a crystal key that only they can activate but they will have to talk to the door guardians and convince them that they are worthy. This gives them some time to think about what they are going to say and they can anticipate for their turn. Putting yourself out there and pretending to be a magical elf is still objectively a very weird thing for most people new to tabletop RPG. Oftentimes, you have to draw them in gently, leading them by example, usually through NPCs. Satiricality and Paydart Productions ask, what is my favorite DND 5e module? Well, my favorite 5e module is Curse of Strong. I am not the biggest fan of the horror genre, but this module is very well done. The setting, events, and NPCs consistently create the dark gothic mood it is trying to achieve. The best part is actually the NPCs. Strath, the titular antagonist, is not just an evil conniving dark overlord vampire, he has a whole package of tragic backstory behind him, making him a very rich character to roleplay. Every great narrative has a great villain, and without a doubt, he is one. But he is not the only reason why the module is great. Other accompanying NPCs with their own missions and ideals that intertwine with the players help the campaign's narrative flow very smoothly. They will engage experienced players and won't leave inexperienced players scratching their head figuring what to do next. I personally think many DMs have the capacity to create a great campaign storyline. But not every DM has the time to do so. An important part of how I evaluate modules is how much time does it save me by running it, and how easy it is to use. And now, here comes the best question, from McBecky89. Becky asked a few questions, but his fourth question really caught my attention. The question was, do you have any hilarious moment when playing D&D? If so, could you tell us some of them? Okay, this is a good one. Just to prevent possible spoilers for one of the modules, I'm going to change the type of creature involved in this story ordeal. The funniest D&D experience I had when my players had inadvertently angered an immensely powerful entity. Imagine how you would have reacted if you were just minding your own business and suddenly you are attacked by a group of self-righteous murder hobos from the back. In a flash of light, the entity revealed its true self. A being of great power from another world they have never even imagined. And boy is he strong. He could wipe the party all by himself with no trouble. As a DM, I have no issue with killing my player's characters, but it needs to serve a purpose. Whether to create some drama or tragedy, it needs to be impactful. Conversely, it's just completely unsatisfying for both me as the DM and the players to have their characters killed in some trivial encounter. I can have my players roll initiative and proceed to plow through them with the creature's overwhelming power. But that's not much fun, is it? I have done it before, they deserved it last time, so I don't find that to be particularly novel anymore. <laughs> How powerful is he? One of my players asked. His power level is astronomical. It's virtually over 9 million points compared to you guys. I said, I can almost hear the collective gulp from my players. And then, a light bulb lights up in my head. I've just came up with a great idea for an encounter. The being said, 
What has brought this display of violence to one such as I? Without mitigating factor that excuses your transgression, dost thou not know that thou art deserving of the heaviest degree of punishment? My players were stunned, not knowing what to do. Then I told my players, Roll initiative everyone, get ready to embarrass yourselves, because if you want to live through this one, you will have to grovel like your life depended on it. Literally. So the PCs took their turns coming up with excuses and apologies to get on the being's good side. They need two successes. One to feign sincere apology and another to feign repentance. They can help each other by reinforcing their persuasion and deceptions and even plea for their party member's case. On the being's turn, he will attack the least convincing players. And the whole thing becomes the funniest encounter we ever had and the way the players cover each other's stories by piling lies on top of lies is just perfect. The thing about D&D is that initiative order is not necessarily only used for combat. It can be used for any critical situation where each action can greatly change the outcome of the mission or campaign. As a DM, I am not the old school adversarial DM whose only purpose was to crush my players. I'm a bit of a hybrid. I like the collaborative storytelling aspect of it, but I want my players to earn their victories and happy ending. I can be cruel, but only because I love my players enough to make their victories meaningful. Alright, last reply before we finish. This one is from Velocitas Eraticado. He asks, Do you work for the CIA? What water filter, if any, should I use in my day-to-day -day life? I am not a CIA spook. I always fill in my water with gas marbles, and you can too. Now, drink your tap water and read a secret message. Don't forget to leave a like, and subscribe if you like my style. CJ over and out.